this is the week of breakage. I know you guys are thinking, oh boy, another white perch. But what I see is Chinese food. I had to replace a compressor in my truck and have had some issues with my walk-in, but got them resolved. Wednesday is the last day for five inches in Maryland. There's a lot of myths out there about regulations and different things. I've heard all kind of stuff. We've had different comments. My wife and kids are on vacation. I'm gonna starve to death. So I'm gonna take some perch up and trade them for Chinese food. I was in a grocery store the other day. I come across this Balmer magazine, I guess. It's got Billy Rice on the front. Uh, I don't know him personally, but um, he's a big advocate for the industry, and man, that's a pretty pot right there. That's how you do it. But this week was food issues. My heat exchanger is acting up. I got one M1 order. I'm actually gaining antifreeze. Typically, the pressure of the motor pushes that antifreeze out the raw water, and it goes over, and then you lose antifreeze. But somehow, I got reverse pressure, and I'm pushing seawater into my motor. So you know how good that's got to be. But hey, <laughs> I keep working. There are no days off. <laughs> Blown power washer hoses. Granted, they were not, not new. Blew the tip end of the power washer wine. The, the piece of metal busted a hole in that. Again, not new. I'm always reminded how good my wife's cooking is and how often she cooks. I do like to cook some, but she cooks most of the time. I'm going to trade some of these for some good Chinese food and get some good eating. In Maryland, we have a size on the males that adjusts up. So we go from a five inch crab point to point to five and a quarter point to point on July 15th. So it's tough on them guys down the bay. They catch more of the smaller crabs and picking houses, use the smaller males a lot. Up the bay, we don't really need them. I mean, basically a small crab, five and five and a quarter. Up here, nobody really wants them. They, they want the bigger crab. I want to thank everybody for watching the steam crab video. Everybody seems to be enjoying it. We're hoping to do a crab picking video, show you how I pick crabs, maybe different than the way you do it. Who knows? Exactly what I wanted to do this morning. Loads. Give you a little advice. Always keep your bilge pump nice and clean. Oh boy. Just, just encountered the um <laughs> the TikTok legend. I gotta I gotta get a selfie with this guy. <laughs> hey man, aren't you the aren't you the TikTok guy? Celebrity. Sorry, I couldn't leave you alone. Look, I even got the hat on. This guy right here is my hero. He's like a crabbing wizard. Finally well, call my first tag crab back. It was uh, the, the hook claw one. Caught him on July 3rd, so it took nine days for him to get nice and hard. He's got that hook claw, number 96. Wanted to remind everybody, July 16th to the 31st is a rockfish closure. This year it's earlier, it's uh, two weeks in July instead of August. I guess guys will be targeting, sounds like some Spanish mackerel showing up. Yeah, there's trout, redfish, stuff like that further down the bay. Up this way, tons and tons of catfish. When you get up above, yeah, anywhere the taps go outside, we're seeing them in the crab pots and, and big stuff too. Mostly channel cats, I haven't seen any blue cats. Perch are always good eating. And then obviously the snakeheads are in every river, every single creek, every everywhere you can imagine, they're there. I'm not saying they're easy to catch, but they're there for sure. Good luck to you guys when you get out with uh, with no rockfish, uh, giving them a break a little bit. Good news, bad news, it's running. It can't be shut off the rest of the day. The other thing is the orbit motor. That thing went up on me yesterday, and I got a rebuild kit for it. I was gonna just rebuild it. It's really one gasket. It's not really hard, but I can't get the keyway out, so I can't get slide the, the oil seal over the shaft. Luke, let me borrow one. I'm a generous guy, so. <laughs> a new one that he had gotten, so he claimed, and one that was exactly the same, <laughs> except for the fact that it was not new, and it was not exactly the same. I can say she had a lot of torque, 
The negative was the RPMs were about a quarter of my normal winder motor. So it was slow going all day long, just waiting for the pot to come off. So we made it through the day though. I'm not complaining. I just like to give Luke a hard time. I'm thankful that he had the motor because at the end of the day, probably wouldn't be able to work today. It's all good. Works out. I'm gonna go home and try to beat this e-way out. I had a crab today, got pinched in the face. You can see there how that how the lung how the I guess it's a lung now, the lungs, whatever. Whatever that little feathery thing is that's under the shell there. Let's see how it works. Pretty cool. I guess that's how they breathe. During the rockfish closer, I guess a lot of guys will be heading to Virginia. Supposedly the fishing's been pretty good down there. The cobia bites real good, and I've seen hammerhead sharks being caught down. I mean, crazy stuff down there. I imagine this year with the water being salty, they'll see all kind of stuff down there too. It'd be neat to see a tuna caught down there by the tunnel or whatever. <laughs> Power washing pots are getting dirty. Oh man, this water's warm. Growth out the yin yang. Fuzz, sponge, hair, it's a massive, a massive, a massive. Fish and shower water up above the bridge is a dirty operation. So you get about four or five days on these pots. If there's no crabs in them, they get dirty. If you don't keep them clean, then they just get dirty real quick again. It's just been, it's, it's, it's tough. It's a tough, tough, tough grind. Now that's a weird claw. A lot of people don't know as far as crab meat goes, you really have two different industries really. You have crab meat and you have the basket trade which is live crabs or steam crabs like you get from a carry out or a restaurant. The majority of crab meat that you get if you go buy a crab cake, crab sandwich, crab soup, imperial, that meat is all going to be foreign meat. Very little crab meat that you buy or get in a dish is, is local meat. With all the mess going on still overseas, with the shipping issues, with sea containers, just getting the product here, let alone it for it to be caught and processed. There's a huge amount of pressure on that industry overseas. Just like a lot of things that come from overseas, it's half of what we can produce it for domestically. Right now, it's about the same or less. So, you know, the picking houses are taking advantage of that to make their money. The other thing we have, demand is astronomical right now, and the prices are reflecting that. It's all supply and demand. Right now, these crabs right here, $30 a dozen. Stupid money. As demand goes up, supply goes down, typically. If supply's up, then the prices stay similar. But in a situation we're in now where we have astronomical demand, we have low supply, the Gulf states are producing less right now, Carolinas, Maryland, salinity's so high right now in the bay, it's got all the crabs pushed up the bay, pushed into the rivers. Guys in the lower part of the bay aren't catching many crabs right now, it's way off and you have the, the, the greatest amount of demand between when the kids are off school from Ju June, beginning of September, depending on when they go back and August. Once the kids go back to school, everybody's in activities, everybody's doing their fall things. Demand will slow down a little bit. Maybe the prices will come down, but it still depends on the supply. So if supply is still way down, prices are still gonna be up. So we're in kind of a mess. When I catch the lighter crabs, I sell them as a cheaper crab, mostly out of my house people as live crabs they steam them they can get a decent product some people don't like them i understand that but for the price of things right now you can get a decent crab for a really good price compared to the other prices and a lot of what i sell as my lights is what a lot of other people sell is good crab so it's kind of relative you're getting a decent crab you're getting a crab you might spend a lot of money on but i'm not going to sell that as a good crab because i like to keep my product really good. I got another good idea for how to steam these light crabs. A lot of people are, you know, having a hard time wanting to spend all this money for crabs and I mean a good option is really the lighter crabs. A lot of crab houses sell them for a dollar a piece or a dollar fifty. There's some tricks to them to make them actually even taste a little bit better and especially if you buy them local from guys and steam them yourself. There's some tricks to doing that. I'm going to do a video about them. How you steam lights. I'll make them taste even better. They're easy eating. If you got kids eating, you're not worried about picking every single stitch of meat out of them and worrying about kids throwing half crab away. At least it's affordable. I try to always have some kind of affordable crabs. I want people to eat crabs. I, I don't want to get it to where it's only for the rich people because, you know, I, everybody should be able to afford crabs. Maybe not the super jumbos, but you know, 
our expenses are up, everything's up, and it's it's not a cheap venture to go out and catch crabs. You know, there's costs. It's being passed on to you guys, unfortunately.